My grandson was supposed to be asleep on the couch, and he did what all kids do. They get up and move around. He was two years old. He wants to play with the dogs. He wants to see where his family's at, and that's what he did. And in the midst of that, he didn't know he was gonna go through the stairs, and he did. The client's name is Messiah Galligan. He was a two-year-old that had fallen at an apartment complex. And what had happened is there are balusters or planks that are on stairwells, and they're kind of the guard to prevent us from falling through and going over the side. Um, the code requires that they're four inches. These were 10.4 inches, so um, nearly three times what the code requires. He has fallen about 25 feet, um, roughly, uh, into an interior stairwell, and he's laying on the bottom of this concrete floor with a fractured uh, occipital region on the rear of his head. I was happy to know that my grandson was still alive. First of all, from that fall, I just wanted to hold him. Nothing else you can do. When I noticed that there was an issue, I had this video of him blowing bubbles through the little bubble blower. He didn't know how to blow a bubble. I was teaching him all over again. And it's like, oh man, okay. That's what really opened my eyes up. He was a two-year-old, but it was like he went backwards. What this complex did to this young man is they robbed him of his fair chance at life. He was on equal footing with everybody. He could have been an astronaut, an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, but because of what happened that day and their failure to ensure that that property was safe, Messiah Galligan lost his fair opportunity at life. Jordan called and he was like, uh-oh, Tanya, we got this issue. They want to they wanted dismiss the case because they feel like they're not liable because they didn't know it was going on. I explained to Jordan, I said, well, Jordan, there's been numerous news articles about stuff going on over here. Um, the raccoon infestation, the trash, the grass, the landscaping. So he went digging. And that stuck with me and I thought, well, you know, if this is a true thing and there was a raccoon infestation, well, then the city probably went out and the city probably investigated that with animal control or something. There's got to be a record of that. So I uh, served a Colorado Open Records Act request on the city of Aurora, their building code enforcement division, and I found these holy grail of documents. There's only about 12 of them and it said that they, that this apartment complex was cited for the condition of their handrails, stairwells, and interior stairs. Um, this was exactly what we needed to establish that they knew about this. And that is actually what the judge found to be persuasive about their actual knowledge of the specific dangerous condition in Building C. It was through a permit application that I was able to find that. Oh, I was feeling like, oh man, we got a gold mine finding Jordan because I mean, he just would not quit. He proved to us that he was gonna do whatever he could do to hold them accountable for that stairwell because he took it upon himself to look into places, nooks and crannies to find that one piece of evidence, that one shred that made the case. It felt great because I didn't feel like he was in it for the money. He felt the same way I did. My grandson fell through the stairs, which could have been prevented, but they didn't want to acknowledge it. And that's what this case was about. It was about holding them accountable for cutting corners, saving money, protecting the budget at the expense of a two-year-old child. And the only person that was pushing back on that was the McDivitt Law Firm. McDivitt is go-getters. They will find that needle in the haystack. I love that I can be comfortable every day knowing that my grandson is gonna be taken care of in the long run.
I would recommend them to anybody for anything um, because I feel like they genuinely care. I, they, they see each person for a person. 